Hey everybody, this is Mike for Faraday Research, and today I'm going to unveil the secret project that I was working on for the last year. Um, about, I would say about four months ago, I decided to put this project on ice. Um, I'll explain that in a minute, why I decided to put this uh, project on hold. Um, yeah, so it I started about this time last year. Uh, we came up with the concept. Um, this project was actually built by somebody back in the 70s. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it is first. I'm going to say, okay, can you guess what it is? So we'll play that little game there. So here we go. All right. I'll give you a second. Can you figure out what it is? Okay, so what it is, is a miniature version of Bruce De Palma's end machine. The Faraday disc. Michael Faraday actually created the Faraday disc. Actually, it was the very first electrical generator ever built. So as years went on, they realized if you were to spin magnets on an axis, that it creates electrical current. So that's when uh, Nikola Tesla got hold of it and he came up with the uh, homopolar generator. So years later, uh, a guy by the name of Bruce De Palma created the thing called the end machine. And the end machine is basically um, a rotor that has a huge amount of magnets on it. Now we're talking back in the 70s here, so they don't have, they didn't really have the high-powered neodymiums that we have today. So uh, even Adam Tremblay, he was another guy who built the device. He got a lot of problems with the government, uh, legal issues, patent problems, you name it. They, they went after these guys like crazy because what, basically what this machine does is create amps. Okay, it creates very little voltage, but creates a lot of amperage. So, like, my device will create, well, the most I ever got uh, in the microvolts is about 102 microvolts. But, I just tested it just before I started the video. Um, the thing's a little bit out of balance. I have to work on that because it's been sitting for a while. But, I can get about 22 amps just by spinning magnets. So, I got... No, the fishing magnets you can buy on Amazon, those big round fishing magnets. Well, I took two of those. They're three inch diameter. So the, uh, the south poles are facing in, north poles are facing out. On each side here, I got two brushes that sit on the leading edge of the outside diameter of the magnet. So when you spin magnets at a high RPM, the voltage starts from the axle and then under centrifugal force and other forces, we can get into the ether thing. Uh, that would take forever to explain that. Um, the, uh, the current starts going from the axle basically to the leading edge of the outside di diameter. And that's where you pick up your voltage and your amperage right off the leading edge. So I got two of them on either side. Um, they are, I tried to make them isolated I, uh, between the two magnets and then I made them together as one. I tried many configurations. See, the problem is with the end machine, okay, it creates a huge amount of amperage, but you got no voltage. So for the last six months that I was working on the project, I've been trying to figure out how to get the, the, uh, the voltage up. And the only way at that time that I came to the conclusion, you had to build a very large machine like Bruce De Palma's machine. But <clears throat> there's a lot of little technical stuff that I looked into that I um, come to realize that Nikola Tesla worked on a monopolar electrical system, meaning there's only the positive, negative could be in the air. So there might be some ideas that I'm gonna work on where I implement this into a circuit that is providing voltage already. So if I add the voltage to this circuit 
in line positive going straight through and then just loop it around and come back on the negative, I might be able to get the voltage from microvolts into volts. Now, if I can merge the two together with the current that I'm generating, you might have a very powerful generator. So say I were to get 12 volts at 30 amps, that's a lot of power. So I've been working on the new Don Smith generator and I'm working with a uh, kilovolt range. Now, I could add that voltage from the Don Smith generator into this and create the amperage, but you know, the way the Don Smith generator works, it actually creates the amps through the antenna that you build with it. Um, uh, that's a whole new video altogether, but let's just kind of focus on this. So that's where I kind of decided to put this on ice was because I wasn't able to fit this into a circuit and increase the amperage of the circuit because I wasn't having enough voltage going through. It's like having a, a, a fast moving stream with no water. You know what I mean? You have to have the water and you have to have the movement in order to create the effect that you need. So I tried a lot of different things and now some of the experiments and stuff I've been doing since that I put this project on ice might actually work out. So I might put this back on the table again and try a couple of uh, experiments with this again. So what I'm going to do is right now I'll just demonstrate how much amperage this thing creates. It creates very little voltage. So if you read up on the uh, homopolar generator that Michael Faraday made, it created very little voltage but very high amperage. So it's creating the current. So this is your prime mover. Okay, it's 12 volt DC motor. And then you got this um, set up here, which I 3D printed. It took me about two months to get this correct. It's very, very accurate. There's uh, uh, bearings on both sides of the shaft. Uh, it's a metal screw, um, screwed shaft. Uh, this is all 3D printed, the coupler. And uh, yeah, so it turned out very good. It was a very good project. It worked well. But to get it to the next level, I haven't been able to figure it out yet. So I'm just going to show you briefly how fast and how much amps. So I tested it just, it's kind of out of balance right now. So I could probably get more speed out of it. But we're going to get it up to about, I would say, about 22 amps. So I'm going to start up. It's going to be a little bit loud, so I won't really be able to talk while it's running. So, But you'll get the idea. I'll put the meter close so you can actually see the performance. So we're already at 10 amps, and I'm not even pushing it yet. It's only about, maybe about... 800, 900 RPM. There's no power going into this. It's generating that amperage just by spinning magnets. I'm gonna go up. We got it up to 20 amps just by spinning two magnets. It's pretty amazing. Like the whole concept is just, you know, kind of mind blowing when you think about it. So yeah, uh, this is it. Uh, I called it the Faraday spike because Michael Faraday actually invented this type of a generator, uh, the Faraday disc. So I kind of honored him in that kind of way. So I called it the Faraday spike and, uh, this was the V2 project. So um yeah it's it's pretty cool uh, it was a really cool project to make and you can make it too it's very easy just get those fishing magnets the real big ones to three inch diameter now i also know too if you want more power you have to have bigger diameter magnet the bigger the diameter of the magnet the more amperage you're going to get and the more voltage you'll get now you got to understand bruce de palma's machine weighed almost a thousand pounds his was very large. So he was making about 63 volts at about 2,500 amps. 
So, you know, we're talking a way big difference in scale here. This is just a, a small demonstrator, just proof of concept that this actually works. And it does. It works amazing. Just by spinning two magnets and put a brush on the end. Wow. That's pretty amazing. So, yeah, give me your comments and uh, let me know what you think about this project. Uh, um, you know, you have to construct a good framework for spinning your magnets. If you don't cr uh, create a good framework like I did, you know, you're not going to get consistent values. You know, like I, I turned it on full and I was getting a consistent 20 amps coming out of current. So, yeah, you got to build it. It's got to be balanced. You know, I had a little bit of shaking on this. It's been sitting for a while, so I got to go back and balance the damn thing again and you know get it so it's running really smooth but if you can get it running really smooth and really balanced and you get a good set of brushes on the ends and hook it up to an amp meter i use the analog because i find it's more accurate so i would stay with the analog stuff than the digital i would stay away from the digital when it comes to uh, working with current stuff i just I, I don't know i'm just old school that way but yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Don't forget in the bottom right-hand corner is the little icon. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, don't forget, donate to me so I can, um, you know, get parts and stuff and get that, uh, you know, the Don Smith generator going. Every bit of, every penny I can get uh, from donations really, really helps get my projects going. That's really kind of what slows me down a lot of the time is not having the funds. So, you know, I think the Don Smith generator, the one I'm working on now, is going to be a really cool project. I did some testing with the Spark Gap last night. And, uh, yeah, it's it's cool. This is going to be a cool project. I thought this was cool. The other one's going to be just as cool, if not better. So, but anyways, yeah, I'll just give you a quick little look at the body of it i designed everything on the 3d printer i did it all in cad fusion so you can see how i did it give you a little bit of better close-ups there's uh uh the magnet you can see the magnet inside there and there's the other one on the other side with the brushes and uh yeah that's uh it was a really cool project i enjoyed doing this anyways everybody uh take care and we'll see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe.